Good evening, everybody. Stan Stovall for News Channel 2. Coming up next on Nightside, President Clinton gives his first State of the Union address. We'll have highlights of the speech, and we'll hear reaction from some of Maryland's congressional delegates. Plus, details on the latest nasty winter weather headed our way next on Nightside. News Channel 2 Nightside is closed captioned. Brought to you by First National Bank of Maryland, where quality makes the difference. From WMAR-TV, Baltimore, Stan Stovall and Mary Beth Marsden with the news, meteorologist Norm Lewis and Scott Garceau with sports. This is News Channel 2 Nightside. Those who commit repeated violent crimes should be told. When you commit a third violent crime, you will be put away and put away for good. Three strikes and you are out. President Clinton gives his State of the Union address tonight. He tackled crime, health care, the economy, and the world abroad. Good evening, everybody. I'm Stan Stovall. I'm Mary Beth Marsden. President Clinton focused on dozens of topics during his State of the Union address tonight. The president finished his speech less than an hour ago, and News Channel 2's Keith Kate brings us the highlights. Lieutenant Mary Beth, crime is certainly on the agenda for 1994. Pollsters have been telling us it is the number one concern among people in Maryland, as well as across the nation. But tonight, the president spent a great deal of his speech putting forth challenges, proclaiming a hopeful beginning on promises to break the gridlock and energize the nation's economy he actually challenged Congress to go ahead and tackle health care and welfare reform. It certainly is an ambitious agenda for 1994. Declaring our work has just begun, President Clinton challenged Congress to act on an ambitious election year agenda that makes health care and welfare reform and anti-crime legislation top priority. Though we are making a difference, our work has just begun. Clinton's emphasis on the crime issue was a relatively fresh departure for the Democratic president and a clear effort to seize the momentum on a traditionally Republican issue that opinion polls now rate the number one concern of Americans. Violent crime and the fear it provokes are crippling our society. Clinton specifically recommended passage of a law making life imprisonment mandatory for anyone convicted three times of a violent crime. Now those who commit crimes should be punished and those who commit repeated Violent crimes should be told. When you commit a third violent crime, you will be put away and put away for good. Three strikes and you are out. In a speech that was heavily applauded, Clinton put emphasis on his pet domestic theme of health care reform and its new companion, welfare reform. We got to solve the health care problem to have real welfare reform. If you send me legislation that does not guarantee every American private health insurance that can never be taken away, you will force me to take this pen, veto the legislation, and will come right back here and start all over again. Well, it should be interesting to see how members of Congress respond to everything the president put forth tonight. Few specifics, but certainly the major themes were there. Coming up later on, reaction and comments from our Maryland representatives on the president's first State of the Union address. Back to you, Stan, Mary Beth. Thank All right, you, Keith. Keith. Thank you. Well, our other top story tonight is the weather. Mother Nature mm -hmm. is going to make your commute in the morning a little slow. Again. Meteorologist Norm Lewis joins us a little early tonight with the details. Hi, Norm. Hi, doing, Mary Beth. Things are looking a lot better now than they were a, a little bit earlier. Right now, Doppler Plus radar still showing quite a bit of rain in the area, but all the way up as far as Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. They are in colder air, but they are still reporting rain. So it looks like the majority of our precipitation will be on the rain side, but there will be some slick areas, and we'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Mary Beth? All right, Norm, thank you. Talk to you a little later. Well, this may turn out to be one of the coldest winters on record, with the shortest January thaw on record. If that's what yesterday and today turn out to be, the only warming for the month. So how are people coping? Nightside's Brad Ganson is out in it right now to let us know. Hi, Brad. Hi, Stan. Frankly, I've never seen a winter like this in Maryland. And I'll tell you, I'm getting pretty sick and tired of it. I'll tell you what, I'm not alone. My second winter here is supposed to be really mild. I was in a storm last March in this one, this year. 
just came back from the Bahamas, and I wish I was still there. Thinking back to last week's bitter chill, Barry Duncan calls this a two-scarf winter. You just turn the heat off. My car was frozen for two days. Barry's friend Greg Scott got out of town, but he might have gone in the wrong direction. He headed north. I went to New York. I walked out of the train station, got on the train, went to New York. Still, you can always find someone who's enjoying this winter, someone like Leonard Wills. Not the rain, the snow. Love the snow of it. How about the ice? The ice? Yeah. It's great. I asked William Wilson how he coped with a bitter cold. Wilson is homeless. Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, basically, I stayed indoors. Wilson stayed at Bigatti's shelter part of the time. In describing this winter tonight, I've heard words like terrible, awful, unbearable. Is that bad? What do you think? I think I've seen better winters. You know, the kind where you go out and you get a nice snowfall and you go out and help the kids build a snow fort and you throw some snowballs and things. Easy to build a snow fort in snow, but this ice stand, this is too much. Well, they seem to be sort of taking it in stride, though. Uh, no one really sort of angered by it. Of course, not, not much they can do about it, too. No, either. certainly not angry. And, and what can you do about the weather? You live with it. You do the best you can. You struggle by. But, uh, boy, you can see people. It's having an effect on All right. It hey, sure. Brad. Yeah. Get out of the rain, will you? Thanks a lot. All right. Good night. Very best. All right. All right. We're going to bounce back to Washington, D.C. tonight. Congress is absorbing President Clinton's State of the Union address. The president proclaimed a hopeful beginning on his earlier promises to break gridlock and energize the nation's economy. He also spoke of crime and welfare reform. Well, what do Maryland's congressional representatives think? News Channel 2's Keith Kate joins us live from the nation's capital with reaction. Hi, Keith. Hello, Mary Beth. As you can see, it is raining in the nation's capital tonight, but uh, obviously some good things were happening inside uh, the capital here. Joining me tonight, right now, uh, tonight, Wayne Gilchrist, uh, representative from Maryland, also Ben Cardin, also another representative, Democrat, Republican, if you will, please quickly, um, what short time we have, and you've been able to digest uh, what you heard. You have some uh, good things that you heard, and maybe some not so good things. The only thing in any speech that, that the president gives, there are some positive things and some negative things. I'm here with Ben Cardin, and I think we're two people that can work in a very nonpartisan manner. And the positive thing of the president's speech with the initiative on, on crime and welfare reform and education, uh, I, I don't agree with all his policies uh, concerning health care. I think there was a tinge of partisanship in his speech, but overall I think we're here for good legislation. And Mr. Cardin, you told me you thought this was the best speech that the president has delivered thus far. I think the president was very presidential. He took charge. He was very strong on the issues that are important that he spelled out during his campaign and during his first year in office. So I was very pleased with his speech. And the optimism that we have going into this uh, second year, if you will, what do you see as the main issue? We mentioned crime. We mentioned it earlier tonight. Is that really going to be the focal point? He brought up health care and, uh, and welfare reform again. Well, he was very clear. Health care reform is, is top one of list. He wants to get health care reform passed. The anti-crime bill was very high, welfare reform, he mentioned many other issues. But I think clearly health care, welfare, and the anti-crime bill. And for you, sir? Well, I think I would agree 100%. Uh, All of these issues are interconnected, and welfare is connected to crime. Crime, to a large degree in our country, is connected to health care. And, and I'm willing to work uh, for, for all of the positive aspects I think it's important. I, I want to uh, second what Wayne has said. Bipartisan cooperation is going to be extremely important in the passage of each of these on each of these issues. And I know there's a lot of us who want to work together on a bipartisan way. And we'll be watching, of course, uh, from the great state of Maryland. Gentlemen, we appreciate you taking the time to Thank come you. out on this rainy okay. night and give us your first impressions. Thank you very much. Best of luck to you, both of you. I know you have a broken... You, you broke your arm here. Quick, uh, broke my uh, wrist uh, skating with the kids. But you're okay now, so I won't shake your hand, but it's not an insult. Thank you again. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the reaction and the comments thus far coming from Capitol Hill. I'm sure we'll hear more in the days ahead. Back to you, Stan and Mary Beth. Yeah, Keith, I remember earlier tonight yes. you talked with Congressman Kwahizi Mfume, who was a little bit concerned about the three-time loser bill. Or, and, and you heard the president the mention, bill. you heard the president bring that three-time loser issue up, and he got a rounding uh, applause from uh, the, the Congress and the chamber there. But, you know, uh, Mr. Mfume had an important uh, issue that he brought up. Let's be specific, and let's talk specifics. What does it really mean? We're talking about federal crimes. This really does nothing for the local crime, which really is uh, 90 to 95 percent of the kind of crime that we generally think yeah. of out there. So he has a good point. We'll see what the president has to say. But remember, Steny Hoyer, who proposed some legislation in the House, his issue is that let the federal government lead by examples, then let the states take note of what they're doing, and perhaps it will be the first step in the right direction and to they perhaps can, solving some of the crime. Yeah, they can tailor it more to a local bill. Exactly. Okay, thank you, Keith. Stan? 
We wanted to know what issues you thought the president should focus on during his State of the Union address tonight, so we opened the new Channel 2 telepoll lines today. And the question, what issue should President Clinton focus on in 1994? Well, 43% of you said he should focus on crime. 16% health, 19% welfare, and 22% said the economy should be tops on the agenda. More than 4,500 people called in to our telepoll. And coming up next on Night Side, a disturbing story of alleged child abuse at an Anne Arundel County daycare provider. And Michael Jackson's child molestation suit is over tonight. We'll have details straight ahead. This portion of News Channel 2 is brought to you by Giant Food. Something big's coming to Giant. No, bigger. I mean really big. It's new super deals. Now every week, save on dozens of new items. Like Coke or Diet Coke. Pick up a case of 24 12 ounce cans at $4.99. Save on 22 pounds of Super G Wild Bird Seed at $3.99. And the value pack of Glad Handle Tie Trash Bags or Kitchen Bags is $4.99. So save big. No, really big. With new super deals every week at Giant. What's it gonna be? Geo Prism or Toyota Corolla? Front view, same. Back view, same. Side view, same. In fact, both cars were built in the same factory. The difference is the price. Geo Prism costs over $1,300 less. With dual airbags and 24-hour roadside assistance standard. Geo Prism. More car for less money. No matter how you look at it. Make the smart choice. See your local Chevy Geo dealer today. Let's compare these two babies. The baby on the left has a beating heart. So does the baby on the right. The baby on the left has arms, legs, fingers, and toes. So does the baby on the right. The baby on the left can turn and jump and kick. So can the baby on the right. The difference is, the baby on the left was just born, and the baby on the right would very much like to be. Life, what a beautiful choice. Families everywhere are switching to something new for breakfast. They're trying Tennessee Pride Country Sausage. And when they taste it, they say Tennessee Pride Country Sausage makes their family's breakfast more special than it was before. Try Tennessee Pride Country Sausage, the pride of country breakfast. Take home a package of Tennessee Pride. The Multiple Sclerosis Society will present its Country Western Dance Saturday at the Gamber Volunteer Fire Company. Call 840-9203. Tonight, Anne Arundel County Police hope they're not on the brink of another major sexual child abuse case. Night Size Mark Vernarelli is in the newsroom now with more on the arrest of an elderly man in the community of Mayo. Mark? Stan, the suspect is 71 years old. His name is Earl Joseph Donnelly, Jr., and police have charged him with fondling and sexually caressing five seven to ten year olds who were in his wife's after-school daycare program. Isolated on a peninsula about eight miles south of Annapolis, Mayo is a tight-knit community, a place where local people donate their cash register receipts to make sure the elementary school has enough computers. But Anne Arundel County Police say one member of this community has been violating children in the worst possible way. We have a fourth degree sex offense, we have some second degree sex offenses and also child abuse. Uh, the actual allegations are uh, for the fourth degree would be uh, fondling or uh, sexual contact that's uh, non-consensual in a genital area. The second degree sex offense would involve an oral type of sex offense. Back at Mayo Elementary tonight, the principal proudly showed us her fifth grade history students handmade models of colonial houses in Maryland, a collection impressive enough to soon be displayed at the Maryland Historical Society. But the principal expects these next few days will not offer much time to praise those history students, only time to help police and protective services investigate a scandal. If they wish to come in and interview children, which is their prerogative, then I will sit in on those interviews. And if they need any additional um, information as far as um, parents' names or addresses, so forth, then we are obligated to give that. The principal, like many others in Mayo tonight, shocked at the allegations. Tonight, the suspect was taken to the Anne Arundel County Detention Center, a $150,000 bond. Police say the investigation is only beginning. And one other point, Stan, Mary Beth, that I should make.
the, the uh, daycare that his wife ran, she's been running for quite some time, according to police, was unlicensed. Police say they have no record of that being legally licensed. They're also looking into that as well. All right, Mark, thank you. Okay. Mary Beth? Superstar Michael Jackson and the teenage boy who filed a civil molestation suit against him have reached a multi-million dollar out-of-court settlement. Attorneys on both sides appeared today at a joint press conference to announce a mutual resolution of the lawsuit. But lawyers are not discussing the actual amount of the settlement. Some published reports say it could be anywhere from $5 million to $50 million. Jackson's attorney says his client maintains his innocence. The resolution of this case is in no way an admission of guilt by Michael Jackson. Lawyers said both Jackson and the boy wanted to get on with their lives. New developments tonight in the Lyle Menendez murder trial. Jurors deliberating in the Lyle Menendez trial have told a judge they are deadlocked. The judges ordered the jurors to return to their deliberating room and see if there's any way they can resolve their differences. Today marked the 24th day of deliberations in the trial. As you might know, a mistrial was declared two weeks ago in the case against Lyle's younger brother, Eric, after a separate jury couldn't agree on a verdict. The brothers are accused of murdering their parents in their Beverly Hills mansion in 1989. Tanya Harding's ex-husband may strike a deal with police implicating his ex-wife in the attack on rival skater Nancy Kerrigan. NBC News has learned that final details of a plea bargain agreement are now being worked out between Portland prosecutors and Harding's ex-husband Jeff Galuli. Galuli now says Harding was involved in the plot from the onset. Harding denies having anything to do with the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. Friends and neighbors of a Woodlawn couple are in shock, and they're also upset tonight. Baltimore County police were called to the couple's home today, only to discover an apparent double suicide. Police found 52-year-old David Morgan and his 41-year-old wife, Allison Morgan, shot to death. Now, according to the family's attorney and police, the Morgans left a signed suicide pact note for their family. Police assume Mr. Morgan shot his wife and then shot himself. The couple was from Australia and ran a kennel from their home. And coming up next, meteorologist Norm Lewis has more on the winter storm headed in our direction. And a little bit later on, Jordan's King Hussein goes on an unusual shopping spree, but first here's a look at tonight's lottery numbers. Critics have spoken. Finally, an American car that can get me away from my Honda. Good job. Just an outstanding automobile. These are the most exciting Buicks to ever roll out of the Buick showrooms. Quotes from real people about the best Buicks ever. Like the surprisingly affordable Buick Century, with an equipment package that leaves nothing to be desired. And backed by the people who sell and service Buick quality. Just one test drive will convince you. Buick dealers offer safety, quality, and real value you can afford. This weekend, you can watch all the Super Bowl action with the most incredible offer in Luskin's history. On every Mitsubishi big screen, color TV, and VCR, no down payments, no interest, and no payments till 1995. Plus, every color TV and VCR is on sale. This 25-inch Magnavox remote, $297. This 40-inch Quasar, $1199. This 50-inch Hitachi, $1999. Remember, you pay no interest for one year. We'll even let you add a Pioneer LaserDisc for $99. Only Luskin's has same-day delivery right now at Luskin's. So how long has it been since you've seen your daughter? Two years. He doesn't know what to say. Hi, 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 hi. He doesn't know where to turn. Daddy! You're on a timer! What's that? All he knows... He's being a little terrible right now. ...is that he'd do anything for her. From the creator of Terms of Endearment comes a new comedy, I'll Do Anything. I love you more than anybody. Rated PG-13 at theaters February 4th. On Sunday, January 30th, during halftime of Super Bowl 28, News Channel 2 invites you to watch a special preview of the stories we're working on for you in February. You'll only see it once, and you'll only see it here. If you're looking for the news that'll make a difference in your life, have we got news for you. News Channel 2, first at 5. Did you know there are some things you have to be able to agree on with your ex? Take the Divorce Couples Parenting Test next Oprah. Tomorrow at 4 on News Channel 2. Norm Lewis has received the AMS seal of approval. 
We saw Brad out there earlier tonight with an umbrella. It doesn't look too bad, though, a little bit. No, rainy. actually, things are looking pretty good uh, as far as the overnight. Now, some of the northern county, northern Baltimore County up on the Pennsylvania line, northern Carroll County, Harford County, basically northern, from Baltimore City northward. If you live in one of those areas, give yourself a little bit of extra time tomorrow morning because some of the areas may be a little bit on the slippery side, but not as bad as what we originally anticipated. As we told you at 6 o'clock, the major portion of the problems is going to be coming Wednesday night into Thursday morning when even more cold air is going to be here and even more precipitation is coming. So in the meantime, let's talk about our forecast for this evening. For tonight, shower activity. Some snow, sleet, and freezing rain is possible in those far northern suburbs after midnight during the early morning hours. We'll get down about 32 degrees tomorrow during the day. That's about all we're going to see for the daytime high, about 32 degrees. The snow, sleet, and freezing rain in some areas will be ending. The rain should be ending here in the Baltimore area early tomorrow morning. Outside right now, 36 degrees, 100% humidity, quite a bit of fog forming in the region. Winds are now from the east at 7, and the pressure 30.18. Here's what's been going on since 3 o'clock this afternoon. This was our satellite picture. The clouds have been around throughout the day. We've been watching the first area of low pressure pass by the region. There is still a stationary front actually right over the top of Baltimore, and that's the saving grace right now. If that system is going to slip down to the south another 35, uh, 40 miles or so, it's going to put us up in some of the cooler air, and that's going to change over some of the freezing precipitation. A second system, now down here, that's going to be moving in our direction, and that system will bring us more precipitation by the time tomorrow night and early Thursday morning work into our weather picture. Right now, Doppler Plus radar showing the shower activity around. Some heavier showers right now moving into northern Carroll County around the Baltimore region. We've had some heavier rainfall on and off throughout the evening, but it is starting to uh, kind of slow down just a tiny bit, but there is more precip down here heading in our direction. So over the next 36 to 48 hours, we're going to have to be watching those series of storm systems passing by the region. The map for tomorrow is going to be looking like this. You're going to see rainfall along the frontal system that is going to be over the top of the Baltimore area. Now, just to the north of that, again, if that frontal system system slips down to the south about Richmond, it's going to put us into a band of much colder air, which will give us the freezing rain and sleet. And then as the system moves back up, it's going to give us a little bit more rainfall starting tomorrow night and then change over once again. So if you're going to be traveling north of the region, up around York, Harrisburg, look for freezing rain and sleet. If you travel farther north than that, you'll run into quite a bit of snow. Here's that secondary system running in our direction, and behind that, there's even more cold air. So we're not out of the woods yet, but it looks like tomorrow morning is going to be a lot better than what we originally anticipated. So again, for tonight, anticipate showers in, in through the early morning hours, showers in the Baltimore area, but the northern portions of Baltimore, Harford County, Cecil County, Carroll County, Frederick County. Look for some possible slippery spots early tomorrow morning as we see a low right around 32 degrees. Tomorrow during the day, that's about where the temperature is going to be. Remain just about normal uh, or about even at 32 degrees. In the downtown area, we can see a high of about 35 degrees. In the extended outlet for the next five days, we're going to be right on the dividing line of that messy mix of the freezing rain, snow, and shower activity. On Thursday, it looks like we're going to pick up about two to four inches of snow. Then the whole system comes to an end on Friday with some shower activity. 38 and partly cloudy on Saturday, Sunday. More showers back into the weather picture with a high of 37. Ken will be here tomorrow morning at 5.30 to tell you exactly what's going on for your drive to work. So go ahead and tune in, and I'll see you tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Dan? Oh, boy, more snow. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next in sports, the Bullets take on Shaq and the Magic in Orlando. And it's media day in Atlanta. As football fans everywhere get ready for Super Bowl 28. Stock our toes next to sports. Don't go away. Dad says, if you want to be happy, try to change the sail, not the wind. He taught me to tack, drive, and play basketball. He's owned five Volvos and an old MG he works on every weekend. He loves to say, there are those who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. <laughs> Whatever that means. What's it like up there? I mean, what do you eat? Great food from Roy's. Roy Rogers? This is heaven. Right now, get two double cheeseburgers for under two bucks. Or get any of these items for just 99 cents each. Great deal. But you don't actually cook anything? Uh, you must be thinking of the other place. Oh, that's this place! 
This is it, the opportunity of a lifetime to own the fur of your dreams. I'm talking about a major fur liquidation sale. Five North American fur manufacturers have appointed me, Heidi Dozier, to direct this fabulous event from Thursday through Sunday at Martin's West. These are the same fur manufacturers that I dealt with at Mano Swartz, and the prices are unbelievable. Many well below wholesale. Imagine a designer mink for $9.88, and that's just a sample from over 500 furs. See you at Martin's West. Over five years, the cost of owning this luxury sedan is 28% more than the Acura Legend. This one, 30%. This one, 37%. That's why these cars are so heavily insulated against sound. So we can't hear their owner's screams. The Acura Legend. In the long run, some things are worth the price. Lease an Acura Legend for $3.99 a month. See your dealer for details. All right. Hey, how about a little Super Bowl hype? We might be able to hey, find a little, right? <laughs> hey, you're getting real excited. Yeah. We're carrying the Actually, game here. Yeah, we got to hype it. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I bet you are. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Buffalo right now. Okay. I'll Ooh, write that, that limb down. is very thin. I'll write that down and all right. bet you dinner on it. <laughs> Cowboys and the Bills uh, got a chance to see their good friends from the news media today. This is required, but most players would rather visit their dentist. Cowboys Leon Lett, the master of disaster, took a powder. He refused a few questions and left after about eight minutes. Nice to see you, Leon. Not much left to be said when you played 22 games, and the Super Bowl is the same as it was a year ago. But speak, the Super Bowl men did, and we'll listen. It's not a feeling of being cocky or, uh, or anything. It's just, just, just the gut feeling. Just the gut feeling I have. I wish we could play today. I mean, I can't wait. We are a hungry team, and we want to win another one. Uh, we want to go down in history uh, as an organization that, that won four Super Bowls, and also an organization that won two in a row. All right, that's the man, Emmett. Uh, Pre-game coverage at four o'clock. They'll kick it off at six o'clock right here on News Channel Two. Tall order for the bullets. Wes Unsell's gang in Orlando, and you know what that means. Shaq and the Magic. Shaq, uh, the league's leading scorer, 29 points a game. Magic after their fourth win in a row. But wait, it's George Murison, the 7'7", 333-pounder. Beat Shaq and hustles up court. George had eight tonight, but uh, Shaq a little quicker than George, who uh, picked up five fouls in 16 minutes. Baseline move there, then Shaq takes the oop hoop and scores through George this time. Bango, Shaq 22 points, 12 rebounds. Magic beat the Bullets, 112-89. Bullets uh, have one of their own, the Mavs, on Thursday night. Mavs with only a couple of wins all year. Marquee matchup in the NBA tonight had the Charles Less Sons in New York to take on the Knicks, who did have Patrick. This one lived up, look at Oliver Miller with a great pass here, and then watch him clear. It takes Starks to about the fourth row. They go behind the back to Sabalas with 34. Suns had a 12-point lead in the third crunch time. Knicks go to Patrick. Why wouldn't you, right? Ewing going to hit the jump hook there. How do you stop that thing, right? Patrick had 24 tonight. But the main man for New York, Charles Smith, giving him some muscle inside. He had a season's high 25. These two with authority as the Knicks beat the Suns 98-96. to Congratulations to Cardinal Gibbons coach Ray Mullis this afternoon. The Crusaders beat the Heights for Mullis, career win number 600. Also in high school hoops, uh, Lake and Southern. Meredith Smith, number one Southern, hosted sixth rank Lake Clifton. Jimmy Moore slashes through the defense and scores. Lake Clifton coach Charlie Moore cheering his guys on, but Southern, ranked number four in the USA, too deep to steal. And Damon Kaysen with the lay-in right there. Southern wins 75-69. Both teams in this weekend's Charm City Classic with top-ranked Rice High and their phenom Felipe Lopez, who we previewed earlier tonight. Men's quarterfinals of the Australian Open. Americans Pete Sampras and Todd Martin advanced to the semifinals. Jim Courier also has a chance to do that. He's alive and facing Goran Ivan Isovich. Baseball in Cleveland will have a new look this year. This is Indians Park, the new home of the tribe. There will be uh, new players in that park with former Orioles Eddie Murray and Dennis Martinez in Cleveland. Also, new uniforms were unveiled today. Red, the dominant color of the home uh, uniform, still the Chief Wahoo logo. And now some football news for you. Peyton Manning, considered the top high school quarterback in the country, has decided he'll play his football at Tennessee. He is the son of former NFL star Archie Manning, and he is a dandy. Michigan, Florida State, Notre Dame, they're all after him, but he's going to Tennessee. 
And on the receiving end of some of those passes at Tennessee, Holly's own Greg Kyler, of course, uh, Metro Offensive Player of the Year. Kyler just announced a couple yep. of weeks ago that he's also going to Tennessee. So right. Manning to Kyler. Get used to saying it. All right. Could, could Manning hear a lot to of it. Kyler. All Manning right. to Kyler. By the way, did I say Buffalo? You said Buffalo. I, I, I meant Dallas. And I said dinner <laughs> at my favorite restaurant. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. There's more ahead here on Nightside tonight. That's right. Up next, talk about the king of the road. Jordan's King Hussein looks more like the easy rider. <laughs> Tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. The leaves have fallen. It's getting colder. Snow. It's coming. You're warm, but what about your fellow man? Be a good neighbor. Help keep someone warm this winter. Look for the green envelope in your BG&E bill and help provide energy assistance for the needy. Cold hurts. The fuel fund helps. Get ready for all the Disney friends you love when Walt Disney's World on Ice, Mickey's Great Adventures, plays Baltimore Arena February 1st through 6th. WMAR News Channel 2 invites you to attend the Saturday, February 5th, 7.30 performance when a portion of the show proceeds will benefit YWCA's Corner House. Tickets are on sale at the box office and all Ticketmaster outlets. Or call 481 seat to charge by phone. Help WMAR News Channel 2 support YWCA's Corner House at Mickey's Great Adventures. Let's talk smart. Let's talk Eagle Vision. V6, power windows and locks, air conditioning, and automatic transmission. Let's talk safety. Let's talk lease. We're talking $2.59 a month. Hey, stop talking and go test drive a new Vision ESI. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Imelda Marcos likes her shoes, Prince Charles likes horses, and it seems Jordan's King Hussein likes motorcycles. The King went on a bit of a shopping spree in Washington, D.C. this week. He bought $50,000 worth of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. The shop owner says the King was eyeing four different models of Harleys, ranging in price from 15 to 17 grand. End up buying all four, I guess. <laughs> now, here's a riddle for you. What do you get when you combine 10,000 coconut? blue mint and bubblegum jelly beans. Well, you get a portrait of Abraham Lincoln, of course. Illinois Governor Jim Edgar unveiled a four-foot by four-foot mosaic in his office in the state capitol. The jelly beans are said to be fat and cholesterol-free. The beans used in this picture, however, may not taste up to par. They have been glued and shellacked on the background. Mmm. Those shellac beans. <laughs> <laughs> I like those next to kidney beans, right? Shellac beans. That's going to do it for Nightside. As always, thanks for watching. That's right. Don't go away on News Channel 2. Morning. We'll be here tomorrow morning, of course, with Rudy and Jamie and Ken. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good it's, night. A, it's okay to go to sleep until 5.30. <laughs> <laughs>